But uh, I, I, I love God. Amen. Do you love the Lord this morning? I love how he works. Amen. I love, it's, it's this God. He's the only one that can do this. But he, always, he takes worship and puts it right with the word. Amen. That's God. He's powerful. Amen. He knows exactly what you need today. He knows what I need today. Amen. And so uh, we're excited. And Hey, Pastor Brian's not sick. He hasn't left the church. You know, we get that a lot when he's not here. He's on vacation. Amen. He took a little vacation this weekend, okay? Yeah, give, give a hand, hand of praise. We thank God for our pastor. And he said he's going to be watching. I think he might be driving, or Dana's driving, but Brother Brian, we love you. Dana and, and Destiny, so uh, Destiny's here. You didn't get to go on vacation, girl? You wait till I see him. I'll take care of that. <laughs> amen. But amen, pray for him. I, I'm excited for him. And so, um, so he told me Monday, he said, you're preaching Sunday. I said, okay. <laughs> Sweating. But that's all right. God's good. But uh, today, I, again, the praise and worship, thank you all and how it just goes. But I've been thinking a lot about relationship and uh, specifically the relationship with God, our relationship with God, you and I. And so uh, I was talking to Christina about this. And we got talking about all the ships of, in life, amen, and how, how, how life is a sea, the ocean. We got relationships. We got friendships, fellowships, disciples. We got hardships, Hello? And so we was talking about all of that, and I, but I didn't, I thought, okay, yeah, God, so I started chewing on this this week, but I kept going back specifically for today, relationship, relationship with God. And so I got some C terms, some nautical terms for you, because we're talking about the sea of life and, and, and your relationship, but the title of the word today, again, is in the form of a question, relationship, ship shape or shipwrecked? Amen, ship shape or shipwrecked? All right, and so um, we're, we're excited about this, and, and again, how worship just went, but uh, I think we all have a, have, a, have a definition or a mindset of what a relationship is, right? It may vary. Some relationships are different than others. Some are uglier than others, to be honest, amen? But relationship, as, you look, as I look this word up, I, um, of course, there's several definitions, but what really jumped out at me, I want to share with you about relationship. And as I, I kept going over my spirit as I was preparing for this word, is tell the church to turn on their spiritual ears. I mean, I'm getting ready to give you a word from my physical lips, a physical definition, but I want you to hear what thus saith the Lord. I want you to hear what God is speaking through the word this morning. And so uh, I'm reminded of Scripture. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Amen. It's not just physical. I mean, I want you to open up your spirit, man, this morning, okay? Amen? I mean, are you awake this morning? Amen. All right. Re relationship. It's simply this. Get this now. It is the state of being connected by blood or marriage. Are you following me? Relationship is a state of being connected by blood or marriage. So automatically we think of a relationship with our family. Amen. My spouse, my children, my mom, my dad, my grandparents, my nieces, nephews, right? Family. We think about our relationships with them. But again, spiritually speaking, we're connected by blood or and marriage, all right? By blood and marriage, follow me. What, what does that sound like to you? To me, it's a covenant, amen? Right? Right? Jesus Christ, he, when he shed his blood, I mean, that was the new covenant. Because he shed his blood, I'm now in relationship with God, amen? I'm a part of the family. You agree with me? Amen? So how about marriage? Marriage, Christine and I got married. We're in relationship. We became one. But get this, the Bible tells me that I'm the bride of Christ, you know, I just saw Brother Terry in a dress in my mind. That just hit me right there. I don't know what happened. But you're the bride of Christ, Brother Terry. Amen? <laughs> okay. Come on, y'all. <laughs> he said he received that. Amen? The bride of Christ. Amen? If you're here again this morning, born again, blood bought, you receive that, you are a part of the bride of Christ. Amen? Amen, amen. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. Amen. So, uh, so second, <laughs> sorry, Brother Terry. <laughs> I can't get it out of my mind right now. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, so, I mean, so God again detailed this. So, so what, what, I've just, what we just done, if y'all don't realize it or not, we just answered the lifelong questions, why am I here? Huh? What's my purpose? Does God even care? Man, why are you here? We are here to be in a relationship with God. Amen. We are created to be in a relationship with God. God himself said in Genesis chapter 2, it is not good for man to be alone. 
Amen. We're created in his image. Right? Amen. And so, of course, in chapter 2, he's talking about he's going he's to take a rib. Amen. And, and form woman. But get, get this. God doesn't want to be alone either. Amen. Why in the world did he create you and I in his image? If somebody says, God don't need me, well, why did he create you? Right? Why? You think about creation. And I, got to, I think I read this to you last time when, when I got to preach in Genesis chapter 1. But you remember, when God created the heavens and the earth, he spoke it into existence, right? Let there be light, and there was light. I'm, I'm giving you a reminder from last time I got to preach, right? He spoke it, and it came to exist. Let there be firmament, and there was the sky and the clouds, amen? But what, did, what happened when he created man? Why did he create man different? To be in relationship with us. I'm going to read it to you in verse 26, Genesis chapter 1. It says, then God said, let us, come on, I love it every time I read it. Let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image, according to our likeness. We know it's not the physical man, but it's the, the spiritual personality, the, the, the moral likeness. Amen? I think I thought of it like this. When we're talking about being in a relationship. And I, I'm going to refer to my family like that. I like to do that. I pick on them, but, but, I, but I love them. Okay? <laughs> but, but I think about, about Christina. Hey, how, how about you? Maybe in your relationship, when you realize that you found your soulmate. What does that mean, your soulmate? You're connected. God created us, body, soul, and spirit, to be connected with us. Amen? Are you following me? All right, so he says this. In our likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, over the entire earth. Over the entire earth. We're created in his image. And over everything that creeps and crawls on earth. Remember last time I told you that I think that includes the devil. Amen, that old slithery snake. He's under my feet, amen. You have authority over the enemy. Do you agree with me? Amen? Receive that this morning. Y'all bear with me. I, I've, been, I've been battling sciences too, Mary. <laughs> I, saw, I was singing bass for the last couple of weeks, but I'm starting to come out. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you have authority over the enemy. Verse 27 says, So God created man in his image, his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him, male and female. Amen? So again, right out of creation... God created man to be in fellowship with man, to be in relationship with us. Amen? So that brings me to the title today, Relationship. Is your relationship with God ship-shaped or ship-wrecked? Amen? Ship-shaped or ship-wrecked? So I'm going to give you some more definitions. Y'all know I like to do this. I, I, I got to dig. It takes me a little while to get it. I'll have to read it three or four times before a light comes on sometimes. So I had to dig a little deeper. But ship-shaped. Now, and again, I'm going to give you this physical definition, but I want you to listen spiritually. Ship shape means to have things in good order, in top order, neat, prioritized. Amen. To have a ship shape relationship with God, you've got to have priorities. Right? And one of our life verses here at El Corn, I don't have this on the big screen, but I want you to listen. Mark 12, 30 and 31 says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your so, with all your mind and all your strength, this is the first commandment. Remember, I talk about priorities. If you want a ship shape relationship with God. And the second is likened to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. So first, you've got to love the Lord your God. And get this. When I read this, I've got to love myself even. That's what it says, right? You've got to forgive yourself. That's for somebody you got to love yourself. you got to forgive yourself. And then you got to love your neighbor as yourself. Again, we're talking about a ship shape, top-notch relationship. I, I, I wrote this down. The health of my relationship, for instance, with my wife, depends on the health of my relationship with him. Right. Amen? The health of my relationship with my children, my daughters, depends on the health and relationship with him. Listen, I, if i got a rough Prayer life. If I got a rough time reading the word, if I got a rough relationship with God, I don't use him like a spare tire, then you, you're going to notice that in my relationship with my family, with, with you even. Amen? Listen, if I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, I'm going to love my wife like she has no mind blowing love, a God sized love. Amen? Same thing for my daughters. Listen, I got three girls, and I say this all the time, but hey, who else has got children? Who else got daughters? There's a little difference, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> But listen, I want to love them like God loves them. And not only that, I want them to see a God man. Amen? I, I want them to see a God man. I want them to see that I love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I love my first neighbors, my wife. 
Amen? I want them to see that. That's what I want them to look for. And so, but again, I already touched on it a little bit. Let me take it a little farther. How's your relationship with your brothers and sisters in here? Amen? Blood bought. Remember, a relationship has to do with blood. Listen, if you're born again, you're under the blood. But how can you be under the blood and have a ship-shaped relationship with God when you don't love your neighbor? I'm talking about across the aisle, brothers and sisters. Right? Amen? Come on. I, I tell you, I've, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again because it, it, it's a God word for now. I've never in my life dealt with offense like I have since I've been the associate pastor at Oklahoma Baptist Church. Inside, I'm talking about church members, brothers and sisters. Amen? That's unforgiveness. God don't hear your prayers. Amen? How can you love the Lord your God if you can't love your neighbor? Right? Amen? Come on. That's amen or oh me. So, Pastor Jeff Edwards used to say, <coughs> amen or oh me. <laughs> All right? <laughs> All right, that's enough on that. Let's, I'm going to go into shipwreck. Let's talk about shipwreck. All right? Now, again, I want you to hear this definition. Shipwreck means the destruction of a ship by sinking or breaking as a result of a storm. Or a hit, or running aground. Amen. Did y'all did y'all receive that spiritually this morning? Shipwreck. You'll be shipwrecked because of a storm or a hit, or running aground. But let's be honest. When I when I read running aground, I thought of myself. I've run my ground myself aground many a times in my relationship with God. Amen. I have. Come on, let's be honest. I, I've been there. I've had unforgiveness. Amen. I, I I've tried to hold on to God in the world at the same time. Right? Remember last time I preached on contagious? That made God sick. Amen? When you're trying to hold on to both, you can't please both. Amen? And how about hits? We've taken some hits, but let's be honest, I've also given some hits. Amen? What about this tongue? Amen? Let's be honest. But, but I want to talk to you today primarily about storms. Amen? <coughs> Excuse me. The storms. We all experience storms. But what did Jesus say about the storms? And, and again, Brother Casey, this isn't on the screen, but I'm going to read you scripture. I love to give you word. And I'll, again, Mary and JT, thank you for praise and worship. Talk about being in the storm and the sufferings of life. Amen. Being on that boat in, this, in the sea of life. Jesus said this in Mark 4. Now, I want you to listen. I'm just going to read it aloud to you. This is where Jesus steals the sea. 435 through 40 of Mark. And it says, on the same day, I'm going to tell you, I'll give you a little, little preface. Right before this, Jesus was teaching the multitude, the disciples and the crowd, about the mustard seed of faith. He, he just taught about this. He said, you know, if you have a mustard seed of faith, you can cast a mountain. But the market tells you that that mustard seed will grow into one of the largest herb bushes in the garden, big enough for shelter, big enough for a bird to make a home. It talks about it take a small seed to grow in. To, picture that as your faith. If you've got just a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. But what if you are bloomed out in faith? Man, that, that's a ship-shaped relationship with God. Amen? So he just taught him about this. But he says this. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go over to the other side. Talking about the other side of the sea. So leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them, um, just he with them in a boat. And there was other boats with them. But get this. Verse 37, and a fierce storm began to blow. How many of you had a storm blow in your life? How many of you got a storm blowing right now? But a fierce storm began to blow, and waves were breaking over the boat, and it began to flood, began to flood and start to sink. <coughs> Excuse me. But Jesus was in the stern asleep on a pillow. Come on. On a pillow. And they woke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are about to die, that we are about to drown? And he got up. <laughs> I just pictured him standing up right now in your storm, amen? He got up, and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Be still, hush, it says, and the wind died down. And there was at once a great calm. Well, I love the Amplified version, says, and there was a perfect peace. How many of you know that you can have perfect peace in a storm? Yeah. Amen, there was perfect peace. Jesus said to them, but get this, he just told them, remember that, he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith in me? I like to keep, the KJV says this, why are, you, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Especially after he just talked to you. Amen, but we, we can't point fingers at the disciples. How many of you been there? I've been there. I've seen God move my, the next thing I know, I'm running my tail tucked between my legs. Right? Amen? So that's a word for us, but how do we overcome the storms of life? Amen, it's by faith. 
They don't catch Jesus off guard. They don't catch God off guard. But listen, I, I, like I said, I've been there and done that. I've been in times where I've been walking on mountains. But the next thing I know, I'm, I'm begging in the valley, begging. God, where are you at? Have you forgotten me? Right? But he's there. Just like the praise song that Mary is saying, he's there. But I'm reminded of something that we always say. We always quote this. We even sing songs about it. And I agree with it. But I want us to, to get it exact. But we always say this, what the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn for good. Right? Do we believe that? I got a few. Come on, church. Do you believe that? God's always, I, I got to say, and I love to say that God's always working for our betterment and his glory. Our betterment's not necessarily the biggest bank account, newest house, the biggest car. Our betterment is our relationship with him. God will take what happens in this life and to draw us closer. Amen? Or if that, he may take it to draw somebody else closer that you've been praying for, right? Amen? So, so I'm reminded of that saying, what the enemy meant for evil, God turns to good. But I wanted you to look at Genesis chapter 50. Verse 20, <clears throat> excuse me, Genesis 50, verse 20, and you know the story, Joseph got sold into slavery, right? His brothers hated him, they were jealous of him, they hated him, they wanted to kill him, but one of them said, no, we can't kill him, let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's sell him into slavery, right? And so uh, he gets sold into slavery, you know the story, time passes, he, God uses him to, to save, save lives, and so, but Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Talking about the enemy. Enemy, you intended to harm me, but look at that. But God intended it for good. God intended it for good. Now, I'm just going to share something. I looked up the word intended. It means he meant for it to. God's got a plan even in the valleys, amen. Are you, are you following me? What the enemy meant for evil, God intended it for good. It means God's got a plan. He intended it. I love the rest of this verse. To accomplish what is now being done to save many lives. God's always working for our betterment, his glory. Our betterment in relationship with him, but his glory is when lives get saved. Amen. Are you following me? God's got a plan. Listen, he knows about the hard times. You've heard Pastor Brian say it. He's sovereign. Do you believe that? Do you think COVID caught him off guard? We've said it time and time again. Do you think the storm you're in caught him off guard? Listen, there's no way, uh, what I'm saying is this. I don't believe God, when he was, in Psalms 139, when he formed you in the womb and he's writing out the days of your life, I don't think he wrote in that so-and-so will have cancer. Do you understand me? I don't think he wrote in there that you're going to go through this or that. We know that the enemy comes to seek, kill, and destroy. Amen. We know that death comes because of sin. God never intended you and I to die. Amen. He loves you. Amen. He, he didn't plan this, but when it does happen, God's got a plan. Are you following me? Amen. Well, what's it take? You've got to have faith in Jesus Christ to have a relationship with God to believe that his plan is going to work out. Amen. So what is God, what's his plan in these storms, in this suffering, in the suffering? What, what's God's plan? I'm going to read to you. Again, it's not on screen. I want you to listen. 1 Peter chapter 5. What is God's plan in the storm when you're suffering? First Peter chapter 5, starting in verse 6. Therefore, humble yourselves. Amen. I'm reminded just now, uh, we all the time quote 2 Chronicles 17. If my people will humble themselves, I'm going to raise my hand. How many of us have a hard time with humility sometimes? Amen. You can't do it on your own. Amen. You got to humble yourself. He says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Amen. Get rid of the pride. You can't do it on your own so that he may exalt you at the appropriate time. I want to tell you this morning, if you're in a storm, it's an appropriate time. Amen. God wants to exalt you. You cast, verse 7, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, all your fears, cast it all, amen, on him. For he cares about you, right? Be sober. Be alert and cautious at all times. When I read that, I think about the storms. Well, when a storm catches you off guard, it's easy to get down. But you got to know you have an enemy. He hates your guts. Amen. But you got the victory. You got the power through the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's under your feet. Remember that. Amen. Be sober. Be alert. Cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, that's why I just told you, the enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. He's not the roaring lion. 
He's an imitator. He wants you to think he has authority. But the, the, land, <laughs> the line of Judah, hey man, has authority in your life. He tries to imitate it, seeking whom he may devour. <clears throat> Verse number 9. But resist him, resist the devil. Amen? Be firm in your faith. That means be rooted. Amen? Your faith can't be here. It's got to be rooted. Amen? It's got to go down about 16 inches. Be rooted, established, knowing that the same, get this, you're not the only one that suffers. I'm going to start in verse 9 again. Get this, but resist him, be firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences, the same sufferings that you are experiencing, that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are experiencing the same thing. Amen. You're not alone. You can't do it on your own. Amen. Amen. Verse 10, after you have suffered a little while, I've said this from the get-go, COVID's a season. It's here, but it's going to go. Amen. I speak that by faith. Amen. Do you agree with me? Sickness is but a season. It's for a little while. Amen. <laughs> Get this. But after you suffer for a little while, the God of all grace, the God of all grace, who called you to his own eternal glory through Christ Jesus, will himself complete confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Listen, I say this, say this, the enemy cannot get ahead of God. Amen. The enemy only has as much power as we give him. Amen. So you got to stand by faith that God's got you, that God's got this. Amen. And you got to walk in it. I told you before, there's 7,000 something promises in the word of God. I intend to walk in every one of them. Amen. I have all power and knowledge within me through the Holy Spirit. The problem is, I just haven't given me all to God. Is that, the, is that the, you know what I'm saying? Give, it, give yourself to God. Let Him, amen, walk, through, walk you through the promises. Listen, again, I said this earlier. I don't believe one minute that God wrote those in the days when He was creating you. <clears throat> Excuse me. But when the enemy hits, when the storms come, God's got you. You're not being forsaken. What the enemy meant for evil, God has a plan for your good. But it's by faith. Amen? By faith. Remember when he asked him when he was in the boat, where's your faith? It's your faith. A ship-shaped relationship with God begins with faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man can come to the Father except through me. That's what Jesus said. You can't, have a, you can't be in a relationship with God if you don't have faith in Jesus Christ. Acknowledging who he is. Amen. Believing in what he did. Amen. And believing that God raised him from the dead. Romans 10 says, you shall be saved. He's the only way. But Brother Bobby, I was thinking about you. I was writing this word down. And, I, and JT, you know, I, I think I, they say I had influence in JT. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I was thinking about the old songs. Amen. And I was thinking about this, Brother Bobby. You're going to love this. I thank God for the lighthouse. I mean, how many of you know that song? Come on. Okay, those of you who raised your hand, let's sing a chorus of it. All right? It says this. I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to him. Get this. Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the rocks of sin, he has shown his life around me that I may clearly see if it wasn't for the lighthouse, where would this ship be? Come on, amen? Amen? Jesus is the lighthouse. He's the bridge. He's the only way that you can be in relationship with God. Amen? Do you get that? You must have faith in Christ to have a ship shape, to be in a ship shape relationship with God. And I just want to remind you this morning, don't give up in the storm that you're in. Don't settle for what the enemy has for you. Don't say, come on, I've heard some Christians say this, well, it must be God's will that I'm going through this. I remember the lady that Pastor Brian talked about last night, I believe it was. She said, I've been praying that I get cancer, so maybe get my, my family's attention. No, that's not God's will. Amen? Amen? God has plans for you, says the Lord. Amen? He wants to be in relationship with you. So don't get settled in what the enemy thinks you, makes you think what's normal. Amen? God has a normal. We're not going back to what was. Normal's not, not you being beat down, discouraged. God has a normal to pick you up. 
that you walk in faith, walk in healing, amen, that you walk in a relationship with him, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Listen, I got a little more to go, but I want the praise team come on up. I, I, I'm going to confess something to you. I always fret about time. Amen. God forgive me. Amen. Uh, Pastor Brian says, you know, I want to honor your time. But when he and I have come to realize, we want to honor God. Amen. Let him take care of the time. But as praise team's coming, I want to talk to you a little more just as they come. So what does it look like to be in a ship-shaped relationship with God? Today, this morning, if you haven't gotten it yet, somebody, some of you are going to go from being shipwrecked to being ship-shaped. Amen. Do you agree with me? So what does it look like? And I was reminded of Psalms 91. Again, we're talking about being in a relationship. And some of you maybe should be still doing this. Remember at the onset of the pandemic, 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 whatever you want to call it, COVID, that, that this, this word became, brought back to life. It started, you seeing it all over social media. And I think we even talked about it here. And some of you may be reading it every day. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it to you. And I'm going to hit the high points. But I want you to see what a ship shape a relationship looks like. And I'm gonna, I want you to listen. And I love the heading on this. It says, safety of abiding in the presence of God. Now, I've been talking about being in a relationship, in the presence. Verse 1 of chapter 91 of Psalms. He who dwells in. You've got to be in relationship with God for, for, for the promises of the rest of this chapter. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. So if you're dwelling somewhere, you're setting up camp. You're living there. Amen? I dwell. My dwelling's at 145 Bryant Lane. That's where I live. That's where I stay. Of course, we get out, but that's, that's where I call home. My home is in the secret place of the Most High. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, meaning I will tell others. I'm going to boast of what God is doing. Amen? It, it's not that you hide your light under a bushel. Amen? I'm going to dwell in him, and I'm going to tell others that he is my refuge and my fortress. Amen. My God and him I trust. And get this. So if I'm in relationship with God, if I'm loving the Lord my God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength, amen, then I'm dwelling in him, and I'm proclaiming his goodness. Amen. And if I'll do that, verse 3 says, surely, meaning he sure will, he will deliver you from the snare of the enemy. Are you, are you agreeing with me? Do you want this this morning? Are you going to leave this morning ship shape? Come on. He'll deliver you from the snare of the enemy, the fowler, and from the perilous pestilences or sicknesses. Verse 4 says, He shall cover you. It says, With his feathers. <clears throat> now you picture, you, I, 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 I shared this with this in the senior adult meal the other day. And I was talking about my kids had some bainy hens. And have you ever seen a bainy hen act bigger than she really is? And she puts those babies under them feathers. She, she builds a wall. She builds a wall from the enemy. Amen. So it says, he'll, he'll cover you. On down to verse 5. You shall not fear of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Verse 6. Nor of the pestilences, the sicknesses that walk in darkness. You'll not fear them. Nor of the destruction that lies lies waste at the noonday verse 7 a thousand may fall to your side ten thousand may fall to your right hand but it shall not come near to you i'm getting excited because i live in it i mean i refuse to believe anything else Ooh. come on boys hold on with me your eyes shall look you'll see the reward of the wicked but verse 9 listen to me because you have made the lord your refuge. He's your most high. He's your dwelling place. You're in relationship with Him. Amen. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Listen, I love, again, I love to look it up. Come on, look up Dr. Google. The plague, amen, is a contagious bacterial disease that sometimes infects the lungs. Amen. Do you, are you following me? I've had COVID, amen, but I didn't lay in it. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not saying those that have has laid in it, but I refuse. I'm standing on the Word of God. I'll proclaim it. Even if I go out with COVID, I'm standing on God's Word. Amen. That God has a plan for me. Amen. Come on, church. Verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over you. I'm reminded of Romans chapter 8, verse 17. 
that I, as a believer, that my faith is in Him, that I have a relationship with God, that I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen? I'm reminded when Jesus was on the cross, He could have called 72,000 angels. Amen? They'd have come and got Him. Amen? So if I'm a joint heir, amen, I'm blood-bought, I'm in a relationship with God, I have access to the angels. And it says, He, God, shall give His angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And remember, we were talking about the, lion, the devil earlier trying to make you think he's the lion. Remember that. Remember I told you he's a serpent under your feet. Get this. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Amen. You've got the power to do that. Listen, I'm going to say this. If you don't hear me say nothing else this morning, you... Blood bought, born again, spirit filled, have power over the enemy. Amen. Receive that. Receive who you are in Christ. Amen. He is under your feet. But God says this, verse 14. God says, but talk about you and I. Because he, you and I, we've set his, we set our love on him. Let me read it to you how he says it. Because he set his love on me. This is God speaking. Therefore, I will deliver him. Amen. I will deliver him. But you've got to be in a relationship with him. I will set him on high because he, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in the trouble. We all have storms. Amen. But he'll be with you in them. Right, Mary? <laughs> he says, I will be with him in the trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him. I show and show him my salvation. Amen. God has a plan. Amen. But do you know him as God? Do you know him as Father? Do you know Jesus Christ as Savior? I want you to stand to your feet this morning. So how is your relationship this morning? Are you ship shape? Are you shipwrecked? Come on, I, I've been in both. Amen. I've been in both. You know, remember shipwreck says you're sinking or you're drowning because of a storm or a hit or you run aground. Amen. This morning, I just want to tell you to run to Jesus. Amen. The lighthouse. Amen. That wants to direct you to that relationship with God. Amen. Listen, you, whether you're lost, maybe you're born again, but you, again, maybe you're in a struggle, you're in a battle. Just run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. This morning, I don't know who God's speaking to. This, maybe this word was just for me. But I want you to know, God has a plan. God's got you. He's got your back. He's got your front. He's got your side, top and bottom. Amen. Whatever storm you're going through, God is with you. Amen. It's for a season. It too will pass. But where's your faith? Where's your trust? JT, Mary, if y'all would, go ahead. But the altar's open. Be obedient this morning.